This video is sponsored by Adobe Photoshop Express. At its peak, the Spartan army was the most dominant and feared military force in ancient Greece, and its prowess was built on the singular mentality and strategy it brought to the art of war. I was never big on the movie 300. When it came out, I wasn't allowed to watch rated R movies at the time, but later on in college, I started watching Spartacus. It was kind of a guilty pleasure show for me at the time. Not even guilty pleasure, all right? I take pride in the fact that I watched Spartacus. And as a result of that show, I began to take a greater interest in ancient warriors. Around that time, I was also really reading this blog, The Art of manliness and there was an ebook that I came across from those guys on how to live like a Spartan or at least how to take on Spartan ideals into your own life and I found it really fascinating. Recently I reread that ebook and I thought it might be interesting to share the ideas of the ancient Spartans and how we can apply them today so that we can kill it. Before starting, however, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Adobe Photoshop Express. Adobe Photoshop Express is an image editing tool and collage making mobile applications from Adobe. It's available on iOS, Android, and Windows. And while it's part of the Photoshop family, Photoshop Express is more mobile friendly and has a number of features that allows you to make creative edits in your photography, but it's still less intimidating than Photoshop itself. In fact, I personally am a little bit intimidated by Photoshop. I have fear of it. That's why I need the Spartan mentality so I can deal with my fear of Photoshop a little more. You can polish your shots with quick fix tools that heal blemishes, adjust perspective, and more. And you can choose from hundreds of themes and effects and extras that you can apply in an instant to express your creativity or amp up your message. Perhaps like Ali Abdal, you're trying to build an army worthy of Mordor. And to sell this feature as you're looking for Rishthas, you wanna change the backdrop on your photo so that it looks like Mordor. Well, you can do that. You can go out there and take a quirky photo and then use your videographer to actually make such creative Edits. I also recently started a movie cinematography based Instagram page and will be using Photoshop Express to put quotations into the actual edit of the Instagram post. It's a style that I'm going for that's different from my main Instagram page and I'm excited to use the app more and more to do those edits. You can download Adobe Photoshop Express on mobile using my link in the description. It sponsors like Adobe Photoshop Express that allow us to make more high effort videos. For instance, we're currently working on a Steven Spielberg style director series video, a genre series video on my favorite TV show of all time time, Peaky Blinders, and an upcoming Watches One sketch on Graham Stephan. And these videos are made possible by my sponsors. So thank you Adobe Photoshop Express for sponsoring this video. And thank you all for watching. All right, now let's get on with the video. There's three principles I wanna cover in this video. The first one is this, there is power in appearance. The Spartans terrorized their enemy even before they got within spear's length of them. As they awaited the command to advance, they stood straight and steady in formation. Hold! As Jordan Peterson would say, they kept their back straight. And everything from their clothes to their equipment bespoke strength, discipline, ferocity. Spartan warriors were clothed in a scarlet tunic and cape. It was thought that red was also chosen because it hid blood better so that they could hide their weaknesses and wounds from their enemy better, which I think is just so badass and scary. And they also wore their hair long, evidently, because it made handsome men look better and ugly men look more terrifying. During the quarantine, when I had my quarantine haircut, many of you agreed on both fronts. I looked more handsome and more terrifying. Now the applications for this idea that there is power in appearance applied to the modern world is pretty far reaching. For instance, there was a study done in 2012 called Enclothed Cognition, which showed how the way subjects dressed for different environments affected their performance. They had done these experiments where a subject was asked to wear a coat and they were told it's a doctor's coat. And in that experimentation, they found that the subjects who wore the coat had more sustained attention than the ones who didn't. Notably though, this only worked when they were told it was a doctor's coat. Some subjects were told that they were wearing a painter's coat and it didn't help their attention at all. Which just goes to show that we artists don't get a lot of respect. You do a little sketch there? Yeah. A little sketch? You go to art school? Back in the day, I remember reading Cal Newport's book on how to achieve success in college, and he said something similar. He said that you should dress up for exam days because some studies have also suggested that looking professional for an exam would help performance. I'm now trying to apply this idea in a number of directions. For instance, I'm interested in increasing my physical fitness this year, so I think it might be worthwhile for me to actually invest in workout clothes that make me feel good, that make me feel more like an athlete. Or if you're working from home and you're trying to get things done and normally you're in sweatpants, Consider just one day or one hour dressing up a little bit, dressing the part of someone who gets a lot done. Back in the days when I would do more stage plays, I also noticed that when I dressed for the part, when I put on the clothes of my character, I felt like the character more. I immediately began to give a better performance. And every actor could tell you that they often have the same experience where your wardrobe, the way you present yourself, affects your output. It affects your mindset about things. Principle number two, always perform a pre-battle ritual. Keep your men busy. If there is no work, make it up. For when soldiers have time to talk, their talk turns to fear. 
Action, on the other hand, produces the appetite for more action. That's another pretty badass quote from the ebook. Before battle, Spartan warriors kept their nerves at bay by staying busy with various tasks and physical rituals. In their youth, they had to memorize verses of a poet, which they recited to themselves and sang and chanted as they marched on to the campaign. In the days prior to battle, they exercised before breakfast, had further military instruction and training after eating, and engaged in exercise and athletic competition in the afternoons. During moments of repose, the men dressed and groomed their hair. They polished the exteriors of their weaponry. So not only were they occupied before times of battle, before times of stress, but also because these rituals that they did before big events, like a battle, kept them in the mindset of action. And through action, they kept fear at bay. I don't have many pre-work rituals of my own, but I'm definitely considering starting some. I mean, I've got a morning routine that I do about half the time, but there are definitely some big potential benefits to using rituals before big parts of your day. For instance, in a study I came across published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, it was found that enacting ritualized actions helped enhance the subject's feelings of self-discipline, even if the ritual they were doing was pretty meaningless. For instance, some of the subjects just knocked on a table or just closed their eyes and counted to a certain number, or just made strange gestures before certain tasks. A lot of the tasks that they were asked to complete had to do with like weight control and deciding if they want to make the healthier habits. choice with regards to diet. And in that study, a statistically significant amount of the subjects who had done some sort of ritual picked the more healthy option before eating, which is pretty fascinating. During researching this segment, I was also reminded once again of theater experience in which before a play or an improv show, the cast members of SNL also do this, people do these acting exercises. TV shows like Barry have done a great job of making fun of this, also High School Musical, but you can do these various exercises to prepare yourself for a big event. For instance, like a live show in front of millions of people. This could be something like doing tongue twisters before some sort of interview or speaking engagement. Six, six, this is six. Aluminum, linoleum, linoleum, aluminum, red, yellow, yellow, yellow. Cleaning your desk, making yourself coffee or tea, or just refilling your water, doing affirmations, or just pulling out a sheet of paper and writing down one intention for why you're sitting down and getting going working. It may seem like not much, but having some sort of ritual before a big event or even a big work session could make a difference in your performance. The funniest exercise I had to do in my acting days was this sort of ninja stance. It looked silly, but it got me absolutely pumped for performances. And final principle is this, achieve mastery in your domain, but leave room for variety. The Spartans were more multidimensional than has often been imagined. Their citizenry was almost universally literate. They excelled in music and dance, they had sculptors, philosophers, poets, and they engaged in a variety of sports and athletics. Of course, their main discipline was the development of martial skill, of getting better at fighting, of being the greatest warriors in the land. They considered this to be their highest virtue, their highest form of excellence, the domain in which every warrior strove to achieve absolute mastery. But oftentimes, giving advice to people like achieve mastery, it seems kind of blasé, especially because mastery takes years of work to get to. During that time, it's also helpful and useful to have hobbies and skills or activities that you engage in to round yourself out. I think it's one of the reasons why I admire Ali Abdal for pursuing concept art drawing so that he can conceptualize the fantasy books that he reads or have an admiration for Thomas Frank for being so amazing at the guitar. Even if you have one main thing and you're really obsessed with it, really committed to it, like many of us are, it's always beneficial to leave just a little bit of room to round yourself out. To let your work breathe and get a new perspective. I think for the time being, my main thing is videography, filmography. It's what feels like I would want to become a master at. But alongside this, I'm also trying to refine my love for fantasy books. I'm still making my way through Dune right now. I also would love to get back into playing the piano, playing the tabla, which is this Indian percussive instrument that I picked up as a kid, and maybe even creative writing. I've also been playing a lot of chess with my videographer. I wouldn't recommend that because playing chess will ruin your life. The main takeaway here is that it's great to focus on that one discipline that you wanna achieve mastery in, but always leave room for a little something extra to become a more interesting person. Anyway, these are the main ideas that I picked up from the ebook. These are the sort of things that I like to talk about, that I like to bring up at parties, how to use the principles of the ancients so that we can be Spartan warriors in the modern world. Is it cringe? Is it cheesy? I don't care, I love it. Nonetheless, it was fun to learn a little bit about the ancients and how they lived their lives. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nikhil. This channel is a combination between comedy sketches and more genuine personal development style videos like this one. If that's something that appeals to you, then consider subscribing. I'm also starting a newsletter on filmmaking, creativity, and productivity. You can find that at captainsinbad.com newsletter. I'll leave a link to that in the description box as well. I like the idea of starting a newsletter because writing, allows me to flesh out my thoughts a little bit more and maybe address topics that 
are really interesting to me, but maybe wouldn't do as well in the YouTube algorithm. So if you're interested in a weekly article from me about something like that, then consider checking that out. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. And for those of us who are willing to be intentional with our appearance, to use the power of appearance, to perform a pre-battle ritual when needed, and lastly, to focus on mastery, but also leave room for variety, to us I say, greatness is coming. Cheers.